Paul Tazewell's Hamilton Spencer, a patent sold to help support the Costume Industry Coalition and its efforts to keep the entertainment costume industry alive. One of the defining features of this garment, both the theatrical versions and original examples, is the glorious and varied trim and decoration. All of this needs to be prepped and applied before the actual jacket is put together. In this video, I wanted to do things the way the pattern suggests, but there are no strict rules. Hopefully my efforts will inspire you to follow your own glorious designs, whether modern, historical or somewhere in between. Stitch first cord using one sided machine foot. Stitch second cord right next to the first, also using one sided foot. Gently press second cord so it sits right above the first. Easy or not. One of the tricks I've discovered through loads of experimenting is that between the first and second pipings, it's really useful to press open the first seam. I'm focusing more on keeping the bottom flat and folding the top back. When you put your second piece in, like it says in the instructions, the trick is to not try and line these two edges up anymore. You want this the second edge, if you like, to roll over piping to make it nice and distinct. By pressing this first, we've given ourselves a nice snug notch to put it into. The second one takes a lot longer than the first one because I'm shoving the piping up with my fingers every few inches. There it is, doubled up. Once that's pressed, these will look a lot more even. So you can see you've got a nice pipey effect on this side and pretty flat on this side. I think that's where they're getting at. This stitching line will disappear hopefully under your garment edge and the other one. If you've got matching thread it won't be visible and anyway this is a theatrical piece so that kind of stitching line will vanish anyway for more than a couple of feet. The first cord actually needs to go as close to the edge as you can do it safely. What I found it's easiest to do is pin it in place rather than trying to do it by eye. So you really want to make sure this is as tight as you possibly can. I found kind of squishing the piping up against the foot is good. So I just want to fold this bit back. It doesn't need to be too precise, but I want it back out of the way. So I figured the best way. So the idea is keep that out of the way so it doesn't get caught up. And then again, it's really safer to pin it. In fact, if you can catch that other piece pinned back as well, that would be good. So again, I'm just trying to keep that as tight as possible. They're not all that close together. Sorry about my wonky stitching. This is one pipe, this is the other pipe. Take this one with the short edge and fold it up. So it just sits under the one with the long edge and then press that so that they are together. So I'm going to press along here so they're really snug up against each other like proper piping. The point being now you've got a nice smooth back. You probably don't even need to sew down this because when you put this in you'll clump that together but I thought it was probably better to actually sew down here one more time. So that's the finished bit in contrasting scrap. That's what it looks like in my fabric. And just to compare to the other method, which I'd already started sewing on, but I'm going to redo, which is much lumpier, if you can see the difference. So I'm going to go with this method, which means redoing 110 inches of piping, but there we go. For a more traditional way of doing piping, do have a look at my piping video. The Rulo trim, which is the stuff for the leaves on the front, says press and stretch two inch wide bias strips for each motif. Have no joins in these strips. Good luck with that. So I find the easiest way to do this is to actually pin one end to the board because then you can get a good stretch. And it really makes a difference to actually press these stretched. Now I'm using cotton. I don't know what it's going to be like with silk. And you see the difference there. This is the stretch, this is the unstretched. Just manipulates differently. Now, it says cut a piece of cording that measures double the amount needed for the motif. 
I think this is a bit of a waste of cording, so I'm going to show you a different, slightly different way to do this. Stitch bias around the cording using a zipper foot. The bit they missed out is that this needs to be wrong side out, like so. So effectively made piping the wrong way out. I haven't cut the piping yet. Mark the piping here, nice and clearly. You're never going to see this, it doesn't matter. Then pull the piping until, until that mark appears and stop there. Now, just sew right across the piping here. If you're sewing machines, I think like mine, you need to start on the thin bit and sew up to the thick bit. Trim the seam allowance to one eighth of an inch. If you've got a really fray fabric, then I suggest you make these stitches really small. Like so, get rid of that. Okay, now carefully roll the bias back. There we go, just starting. So I think one of the tricks is to make sure that the stitch onto the cord is really close to the end. And also, I guess, make sure this stitch isn't too tight. It looks very pretty once it's done. It just takes a while. There we go, done, that's it. And because we did that whole shift down, we haven't wasted any piping. Just repeat that for six lengths. Experiment with a short piece for your um, how tight to do this and how close to the end you need to do that first stitch. Just come off there and that's done. So I've transferred the roll line onto here and then I found the best way is to use my white carbon paper and a pencil, not too sharp, blunt. And then just simply pressing quite hard, go around the motif. Making sure you get all the lines. And there we go. That's all transferred across. So when you're doing the second side, obviously your pattern needs to be the wrong way up. If you've already done the other side, then you can see the motif through your paper. Okay. When it came to sewing the trim on, I actually decided not to use the rouleau trim, partly because I have a patterned fabric, so I won't get the same tone on tone effect that the original design suggests, and partly because I'm not sure I have enough fabric left to make that much bias tape. I'm using a modern paracord instead, which I feel is in keeping with the aesthetic of the camo fabric. Sewing it on is much the same. It's just a matter of following the mark line carefully and working stitch by stitch. That's the finished oak leaves. I'm going to put the buttony things on later because I need to create them first. Decorative balls. No sniggering at the back. Cut 32 inch squares. Hand stitch a quarter size circle in the centre of a square. I have a quarter, which is about that big. If you're British, that's the size of a tempe. If you're European, it's a smidge bigger than a one euro, a smidge smaller than a two euro, just to give you some kind of clue. So I think the easiest way is going to be just to draw a circle. So there's our circle. The smaller these stitches are, the nicer your gather will be. So we're just going to sew all the way around, little tiny gathering stitches. And you want your thread to end up on the outside. Don't cut it off, don't even unthread it. Now they say to stuff it next, but I think personally that it's well worth trimming this now to like half an inch. I'll probably get away with a smaller square than that if you needed to. The best thing to do now is to start to pull your little well in, like so. It's where you hope you've got a good knot at the beginning. Okay, so pull it into its little hat, like so. And then when it's starting to ball in, to pop a bit of stuffing in. My stuffing is recycled 
pillows, bed pillows. So stuffing's a little bit variable. Stuff those as tight as you want, I guess, really, and keep gathering in. I'm just using a, a little tool to poke that in as far as I can to get it right in. There we go. So now we have a little little bobbly button. As you can see, the smaller your gathering stitches are, the neater this will be. And then you need to sew it up. I tend to sew across the ball because you can then kind of pull it tight and then you just keep doing that until you're happy that it's going to stay put. And once it's sewn up to your heart's content, you can trim this a little bit more. Okay, it is, in my opinion, an easier way. So, medieval ball buttons, that's what you want. Get yourself a round thing that is about two inches five centimeters round this is a tiny bit small but if i cut around the outside so you want the same size of scrap the circle you do is a bit bigger so if i just cut a little bit outside my circle i will get my five centimeter two inch circle so this time you may want a stronger thread measure in half a centimeter or a tiny bit more so that's about quarter inch out there. Make sure you have a good knot. Right, if you're using silk, you might want to be a bit further in, but cotton or wool, this is fine. So now we're just going to sew a running circle all the way around this. Kind of like we did before, but further out. Like so. And you want to end up with your thread on the outside. Tighten the thread a bit so you have a bird's nest. Not too tight though. So you start to tighten this again like we did before, but not too much. Now there's a trick to this. I will link to the website I got this fantastic technique from. It's rosaliegilbert.com. You kind of fold the middle, the edges into the middle like that. So you get a little shower cap as she puts it. There we go. So you just sort of fold the, fold the edges in like so a little shower cap and then you keep pulling it should start to fold in this is why you want nice strong thread keep tightening i hope you don't snap your thread actually make a little little ball there we go do you see it's starting to ball up Now we're going to start sewing across. So we're going to take from the thread across to the other side. Like so. And then go back again. That's flat, like so. And to go the opposite and sew the sides into the middle. There we go. Now it's starting to ball up nicely. And back again there as well. So you really need to squish it. And you just start sewing all the sticky out bits into the middle. And sometimes they get stuck. So now we are just sewing all these little sticky out bits into the middle. There we go. And it just suddenly starts to go into a proper little ball, little ball button. If you want to squash it a bit flatter and keep sewing in the sides you can. I much prefer that technique. I don't think it takes any longer by the time you've faffed about with stuffing. Okay. And also you've got a nice little tail sewing on at the end. Whilst this one still needs some more work to get rid of these edges, which I haven't yet done. Okay. The sleeve trim. I'm just going to do a demo short piece again. Press and stitch two inch wide bias strips and enjoins where necessary. Fold bias in half lengthways and stitch at quarter an inch. 
and I'm assuming when they say stitch at quarter inch they mean the actual final width is a quarter inch which isn't very big like so and then I'm going to trim this right down to the smallest seam allowance we can possibly do without cutting through the thread off okay I'm going to be honest with you I can't turn the two quarter inch tube I just can't get it to turn I do have quite thick fabric so I'm going to give it another go with a 3 8 tube, which I'm hoping that extra amount will just give me enough space to turn. Yeah, it's only the old knitting needles working. Didn't really need the tube. Because once you're through, there we go. So much easier, just a little bit wider. So the moral there is, if you can't get it to go, just make it a tiny bit wider. And we press this flat. When you press this, you actually want the seam at the edge because we need to see both sides of this. Get your pattern where you can see it. I'm just doing this on the paper because my sleeve isn't quite ready to go yet. So you're just going to follow the notches. So we're going out, tuck it under, and then fold it back over and fiddle until you get that angle right. 